1. Rejected Child Technology genius, Steve Jobs was born in 1955 in California, USA. However, he was a rejected child. Steve's mother became pregnant with him, but the family did not accept it, so she gave him up for adoption. Jobs was then adopted by Clara and Paul with the condition that he would be sent to college. Since childhood, Steve has been a curious child. Paul crafted a table in their garage to pass on the love for mechanics to Steve. Steve admired his father's skill, stating, if we needed a cabinet, he would build it. When he wow. built fences for us, he gave me a hammer so I could work with him. I didn't like fixing cars, but I was eager to go out with my dad. At the age of 10, Jobs developed an interest in electronics and befriended many engineers in the neighborhood. Despite his intelligence, Jobs was a troublemaker in school and almost got expelled for his disruptive behavior. Paul, instead of blaming his son, encouraged him and attributed the issues to the school's failure to challenge his intelligent son. Keeping his promise to his biological mother, Jobs entered Reed College in 1972 but dropped out the same year. He then became a technician at Atari Inc., where his first success was developing a compact circuit board by eliminating around 50 chips and creating the blue box, allowing for free long-distance calls. 2. Founding Apple at 20 Establishing Apple, huh? Let's contact to Steve. Hello Steve, how did you found your company, Apple? Since the 1960s, Silicon Valley has been a significant tech hub in the US. HP was dominating the market with its tech products. Steve was, a computer genius and my friend who used to work at HP, and I met due to a shared interest, playing pranks on people. The first computer was born in 1976 in my own car garage. Shortly after, Apple II was introduced with a compact design, bringing tremendous success. At the age of 25, I had a net worth of $250 million. In 1983, a turning point occurred, leading me to leave the company I founded. What's that? Let's go to part 3. 3. Failure and Endless Effort In a conversation between Steve and John Scully, Pepsi's CEO. Do you want to sell sugared water for the rest of your life, or come with me and change the world? So, both Steve and John became leaders and co-owners of Apple. During this period, the Macintosh personal computer was born. A groundbreaking step as a computer that could display images on the screen and utilize a compact mouse. In 1985, Steve Jobs left Apple due to a setback. No, it's not a setback. It's because I was overly optimistic, thinking that Macintosh could replace many other devices. Regardless, it paved the way for my future success. I founded Next with some of my colleagues. I created WebObjects, the software platform that forms the basis for iTunes in the Apple Store that you use today. In 1986, seeing the potential of Pixar, Steve bought it. Toy Story, created with computer technology, was not the trend of the time in 1986, but Steve and his team made the film with very few resources. Well, it became a legendary animated film. Apple faced a crisis without Steve. In 1996, Apple had to acquire Next and invite Steve back to work. I found my passion again. In 1998, the iMac was introduced, starting a trend of high-end fashionable computers. By the end of that year, iMac became the best-selling personal computer in the US with a variety of colors. In 2001, he returned as the CEO of Apple. Does it sound familiar? Maybe your family has it in the cupboard. It's the iPod, a compact music player that Steve introduced, marking the beginning of the 21st century. Thank you, kids, for praising me. The handheld device you might be holding now could be my innovation in 2008. The first iPhone integrated various features, internet access, touch screen, music playback, and video streaming. Many functionalities were consolidated into one device, eliminating the need for people to purchase multiple devices. In 2011, the virtual assistant Siri was introduced, shaking the world as people could give voice commands solely on a phone. Surprising facts about Steve. 1. Dreamy love story of the tech king. Steve got married to Lorene Powell in 1991. Their love story began when Steve happened to sit next to Lorene during a lecture at Stanford. The pure beauty of the blonde-haired college student caught Steve's attention. I looked to my right, and there was a beautiful girl there, so we started talking while I was waiting to speak. I think to myself, if this is my last day on earth, I would use it to come to this business meeting or go on a date with that girl. Loreen shared Steve's struggles and is also the co-founder of College Track, a nonprofit organization helping low-income students get into college. 2. Steve's kids are not allowed to use Apple products. Despite being the creator of Apple products, Steve Jobs' own children were restricted from using Apple devices. 
Steve Jobs stated the reason for limiting the use of mobile devices like iPhones or iPads for his children, expressing concern that technology might impact them negatively. I don't want them to be limited by technology. As a parent, I think I'm responsible for setting limits on how much technology they use. 3. Bullied During School Days Despite being a world-famous billionaire, Steve Jobs was bullied during his high school days. He had an average GPA of only 2.65, and it was with the encouragement of a teacher named Teddy Hill that he rose to the top of his class. His intelligence made others envious, leading him to switch schools and forego college in the near future. You have now learned about Steve, the computer and tech genius. Don't stop pursuing your passion, kids, keep dreaming and creating. See you again. If you like our video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you and goodbye.